Hi, g'day. My name's Sean. Um, I run a WordPress agency here in Singapore called Chilibin. Um, and as, the, as Rob said, um, part organizer or co-organizer of this meetup as well. I've done a few talks previously on bits and pieces. So um, my talk today is mainly around white labeling WordPress. So um, removing the WordPress part of it um, and kind of branding it towards either your company or to yourself, kind of replacing your logo and a few other bits and pieces. So I'll run through kind of what we can do in terms of what access we have and then some of the plugins and things to make it easier. Because I'm a developer, there's some code in there as well. So if you want, I can share these slides at the end. Um, but we'll kind of get started in. Um, so the first thing that you see once you log in is obviously the login screen. And it's remained, well, this way since probably WordPress 3-ish. Um, so it looks pretty boring, I guess. It has the WordPress logo up the top and then username and password, pretty standard. Um, if you do have two-factor authentication, there's a few other buttons and then some single sign-on buttons you can install with plugins as well. But it's remained the same for a long time. This is the login for WordPress.com and as you can see, there's some extra uh, functionality there. It's powered by Jetpack um, and there's a login with, uh, with Google as well. So here's an example of kind of the, just a really simple uh, thing that I did for my background and my kind of my site. Essentially change the background, change a little bit of CSS code on it, change the logo, and that's it really. So change logo, new background, change fonts, and then change the button style. So just to match my branding. So I'm pretty much the only one that sees this, me and my staff. But for me, it's important to, to have the branding consistent across all, um, all different platforms. So clients don't see it, but that's important. So another example of something I just whipped up quickly. Um, this just pulls an image from Unsplash, so just a random image. Um, I replaced the, the WordPress logo with the WordPress.org logo, and that's just taken directly from the WordPress site as well. Um, so it can be done pretty easily, and there's a little bit of code here, if you can see that. But um, I won't go into too much detail about the technical sort of code, but essentially what it does um, is it just injects a little bit of CSS onto the login panel. So it enqueues this, this CSS, um, and the information there, body.login, is just for the body to grab an image. So it grabs a 1440 by 810 image, random image, sets it as the background and uses background size cover to fill the whole space. And then the body login H1A, which is essentially the WordPress logo. Some people get confused between WordPress.com and WordPress.org. So what I did is I just threw it up the WordPress.org logo. Um, so there's a couple of options there that you have um, to set the background size as well as the image size. So that's how I do that. Um, there's a couple of other tweaks that I like to do on all my client sites as well. Um, traditionally, the logo at the top always links back to WordPress.org. So I make a change just to return the home URL, so the my site logo, uh, my site URL, sorry. And then if you highlight or hover over it, it displays WordPress. So I just return my name of my blog as well. Just little small things, but um, things that I find are important and add a little bit more value as well. If you're selling sites, something like this may seem really small, um, but to some companies it's really important so it can add a lot of value with you know, 20 lines of code. Um, but if you're not a code monkey, then there's plenty of options that are free and available in the WordPress repository. So um, there's, there's one that's been around for a long time, which is um, by Mark Jackwith, which is login logo. Essentially, there's no options for that. You grab a file, um, login logo.php, login dash logo.png, uh, sorry, or an SVG or a JPEG. You throw that in your WP content directory, and it just replaces the logo. Um, so not too many options with that one, but it's really simple if you just want to change the logo. There's also WP custom admin login page logo. 
there, there's so many of these, I just picked these four. They seem to be the most popular ones. This one has a lot more options in terms of changing. You can upload your logo through the admin, you can change custom CSS, you can replace a text message, like a welcome message, um, and things like that. There's the custom login one by Binary Moon. That allows you to upload a background image as well as the other options, uploading your own logo, welcome message, and change some CSS. And the other one, theme my login, this one's quite popular because it, it removes this whole, uh, sorry, this whole page at all and moves this into the front end of your website. So it essentially uses a normal page template and then replaces the login functionality on there. So it looks exactly like your current branding, just the normal page and has the login that way. The same as it has your um, forgot password link and things like that. So login and registration you can kind of keep on the front end and nobody will ever see the back end. So that's a good one for keeping on brand there as well. Um, but check out the repository if you just check in the login logo or something like that. There's plenty that will come up. There's some paid ones as well, but most of these will get you there. And there's one that I'll look at a little bit later that kind of does all this and more. Um, the other area that you can customize is the WP admin area. And I always add about three or four little snippets on this one. Um, this one adds some code to remove the WP logo. So if you look in the dashboard, it has the WP logo up in the top left-hand corner next to the dashboard. So I remove that. Um, and this code itself, in the bottom left-hand corner of each page, it says like proudly, ah, thank you for creating with WordPress and a link back to WordPress. I just changed that to say, you know, the website was built by me. Just so, you know, sometimes you have staff that come through the site that may have moved on, but it's a nice kind of link back to, you know, who created it. You can add some support text as well down there. Um, as always, there's plugins that do it. There's probably one main one, uh, which is WP, uh, white label CMS, sorry, by video user manuals. It hasn't been, up, well, it's been updated recently, but the UI of it is a bit terrible. It's still, it's still using some, some free icons that look like they're from really early versions of uh, a KDE, no, GNOME, the Linux, Linux operating system. But anyway, there's plenty of options um, and can be assigned by user profile. So you may have the editors that have no access to certain areas um, and admins have access to other areas. You can kind of control that as well and show different dashboards. You can bring up things like if you want to show your RSS feeds on the dashboard, you can show that and all your blog posts will come up into your client websites. And you can change the login logo, change the header and footer and all that code that I showed before just with a few option checkboxes. So um, have a look through that one if you want as well. Um, and what else can we customize? There's, there's quite a bit actually. There's um, these four plugins that I found. One's called Admin, Admin, Adminimize. Yeah. So this one, it's quite good for locking down things. Say WordPress has four or five main user roles, administrator and editor. And there's a fair distance between the capabilities of those two. You may want most of your users to be editors, but then you also want them to have a little bit more access, but not complete admin access. So you can do that with this plugin, as well as the Menu Editor Pro. And also, if you do have your full administrator, you can have like a super administrator, which is usually the developer or the owner of the site. And then what you can do is remove a whole bunch of plugin menus that can really clutter up the interface and give your client an experience where they have three or four things to choose from. Um, there's also fancy admin UI. That is, I should put screenshots on, shouldn't I? Um, that shows a clear blue gray theme and there's a slate admin theme and there's a WP notification center as well. Actually, is there Wi-Fi here? It's all right, I can, 
Anyway, have a look at them. The slate admin theme changes the kind of default admin theme to look really dark. The fancy admin UI one is kind of um, like a material um, design style. And one plugin that I really like uh, was developed last year called WP Notification Center. Sometimes if you've been into a website that hasn't been updated in a while, you'll find that there's like, uh, at the top, there's like five or six different messages. So, you know, please donate to our plugin or, you know, there's a new update. Some of them you can dismiss, some of them you can't dismiss. But this WP Notification Center essentially moves all those into a separate page so you can keep it clean and clear. And then you get the little red icon in the top right-hand side next to your name where it says howdy or hi. Um, and you can view it that way, so it keeps it nice and clean. Uh, why? Why waste your time doing all this? Um, essentially, so it reduces clutter for, for your clients, removes the branding and causes confusion. Sometimes people don't necessarily want a WordPress website, they just want a website. And confusing WordPress, WordPress.com, WordPress.org with the company that built it can kind of tying all that together and being a website provided by X company um, can help with that as well. Um, increases some professionalism as well, so people are more comfortable using something than um, a generic WordPress one if it's branded towards your company. You can offer additional support, so like I was saying, you can include dashboard videos, you include RSS feeds from your blog, and then, you know, I don't know how many people actually use the dashboard, but there's a lot of things on there that aren't useful. So you can make that a useful space for your clients as well. Um, and that's it from me. So it's me, um, Sean. I run Chili Bean Web Design here in Singapore. Any questions? <laughs> Don't be shy. <laughs> okay. Um, yep. So where can we find the head section of our website? Uh, so I wanted to verify my website with the search console of the Google. Yep. But uh, it requires to add the code in the head section, body section of the website. Yep. But I don't know where to find it. It sort of depends on your theme. Okay. Um, there are some plugins that you can download that will allow you. I think there's one called like header styles and scripts or footer or header. And that will allow you to insert HTML code. Okay. Also, if you're just using like search console, then you can, if you're using Yoast SEO as an SEO plugin, I think in one of the options there under, they've changed the UI lately, but under there you can actually add in the HTML code in there and then authorize that way. And then. I've got a question. Uh, what are the legal implications for you know, really changing the stuff up, especially like you know, and stuff, so you know? Well, it's an open source software, so you can change it as, you know, if I wanted to go through there and change the, the source code on my website, then that's completely up to me. It may break, but it's open source, so once you've downloaded it, it's, you know, it's free to do what you want with it. Distribution is where you can get into trouble, you know, selling, as long as it's under the right GPL license, and that's a whole other topic, but, um, but yeah, as long as it's for, for your own use, then it's fine and for certain sale as well. Is it worth to pay for those paid uh, plugin to do the white labeling? So the white labeling CMS, this one here, that's free. Yeah, I mean, there, are, there are paid ones. There are paid ones, yeah. Not really. Not really? Okay. <laughs> um, if you find that something like this doesn't do anything, you may find some snippets that you can chuck in there that will do the extra little bit. The UI is probably a little bit nicer. There's one white labeling CMS. It's a very similar name that's in Theme Forest or Code Canyon, but they're very similar, yeah. Cool. All right, thank you.